So a lot of you are regen people. You like building regenerative receivers of all kinds. I've got three of them here on the table just to uh, remind you of all the different styles of regenerative receivers we have. Here's a solid state model. This is a bipolar regenerative receiver, but you can make these with FETs as with the kitchen regen, which was very popular back in the early 2000s. I used to work with Chuck at Analog Devices and we'd have lunch together and discuss such circuits and uh, he always made fun of me because he said, Mike, unless you build a circuit with less than 10 or 15 parts that costs less than $15, nobody's ever going to build anything that you design. So uh, Chuck was all for getting people to the bench and uh, starting to build the circuit instead of putting it off, dreaming about it, being afraid to start, in other words. So he thought if it had any more than 15 or 20 parts or required more than $15, why even bother to put it on your YouTube channel? Of course, we didn't have YouTube yet back then, but uh, I was writing articles and, and he was as well. And uh, we tried to keep the circuits fairly simple. Here's, of course, a, a Morgan-style regen. These are very popular to build with a single tube. And, of course, the Paraset the Paraset Regen with two 6SK7s. This thing is so hot, if you put it on a, a ham antenna, uh, you have to take the headphones off because there's no volume control on this thing. This thing is made for a 25-foot wire, not a full-size ham antenna. So that brings me into why I'm making this video. I'm running into a lot of situations, especially if you guys followed my latest uh, adventure with the portable set outdoors trying to do parks on the air with a regen receiver. You all could see there were issues there. And this issue that we run into with regenerative receivers is fairly simple. When you transmit, you overload the regenerative receiver. It causes the receiver to actually shut down and you won't hear a side tone. You won't even be able to tell what frequency you're on. So that's a kind of a basic problem with the regen. Even if you're using a crystal controlled transmitter, which Grandpa did not, by the way, back in the uh, 20s and up through the early 30s. A lot of people were still using free-running oscillator or VFO-type transmitters. They didn't use crystals. So how did you know if you're on frequency, you're at the band edge, you're in the portion of the band that you should be in, and how did you know that the receiver was actually tuned to whatever your transmitter was tuned to? With the advent of crystals, it became a little bit easier because at least you knew what your transmit frequency was. But how did you get the receiver on the same frequency as that crystal? Because it's being overloaded by the strong ham signal. You know, even a 2-watt transmitter, a QRP transmitter, will easily overload or a very sensitive regenerative receiver. So we need to overcome that. Well, guess what? Grandpa needed to overcome that too. And it was solved in the 1920s. We'll get into that after I describe my station monitor that I used for the portable station uh, for Parks on the Air. Let's go over that first, and then we'll get into how Grandpa actually solved this, and it was a, uh, a very clever solution indeed. So stand by. We're talking about overloading regens using regenerative receivers on the hand bands in a practical manner. And of course, we want to hear our signal. We want to be able to hear our keying with a side tone. Let's solve that too. Now where did I put that 3D BB? Oh yes, in the closet I guess. Ah, ah yes, here it is. Okay, let's see if we can find some gear here. Ah, here we go. Little transmitter. Everybody needs Mr. Whoopi's closet. Hey, where do you think all those projects go when I finish up a YouTube video? They get thrown uh, all over the place, but they seem to accumulate in this closet. A lot of them. So this is the regenerative receiver. 
on 40 meter lower side bend. Let's go to the Watkins Johnson. Turn down the regen. So this is a two-tube regenerative receiver running into a 600 ohm output and there's a 600 ohm to 8 ohm uh, transformer in the speaker so I'm taking some losses. So then uh, back to the Watkins Johnson. So here's the first test. I have a small transmitter. It's a single transistor, a 3725 transistor with about 12 volts on it. It puts out about a quarter watt, about a quarter watt on the meter. I first check the frequency. There's nothing on this frequency. It's the middle of the day. This is around 7115 kilohertz in the 40 meter band. Now at this low power of about a quarter watt out and with a very well shielded regen, this is a really well shielded fairly high performance 2 tube regen, I am able to I'm able to zero beat, I have a side tone, everything is working beautifully. So we've just proven that with a low power transmitter and a well shielded regen, we can do some work as is. And it all works out. Now let's go to a little higher power transmitter. Okay, so we had our quarter watt transmitter, I'm going to call it the quarter watt transmitter, and the regen seemed to tolerate that okay. We got good side tone, we were able to zero beat our crystal, everything worked fine. So now we're going to step up with 10 times the power at about 3 watts output. This is a small novice transmitter from the probably the early 70s or late 60s. By the way, I'm going to add some links to this video because when people see things in these videos and they say, wow, that's cool, I want to find out about that. I've done videos on everything that I show, basically, and I'll put some links in there. So if you're interested in some kind of regenerative receiver or maybe a transmitter that you see in these videos, there's probably a whole series of videos describing how to build them and how to work with them and how they were restored in this case. Okay, let's see if this guy is going to transmit. Let's see, we got to go to transmit. Oh yeah, there we go. Not quite four watts out. Okay, let's tune it. Wow, I couldn't have showed that to you better. Did you all see that? Did you all hear it? That's what I'm talking about. That's what happens when a regen is overloaded and it blocks. You never can get to zero beat. Now in this case, you can kind of, by ear, find the middle of the blocking and kind of split the difference. And you'd say, okay, that's probably where I should listen. Okay, it's not giving you a zero beat, but if you work it back and forth, you can probably estimate where your transmit frequency is. But forget about getting a side tone. There's no side tone now. The regen is completely blocking. And I'm telling you, this well shielded regen is acting a lot better than most regens would. They're built on a, a wooden base with just a, a either a masonite front panel or a metal front panel. It would even be worse. It would probably be blocking even with the small quarter watt transmitter.
Okay, let me explain some of the features of the fairly crude station monitor that I made for the outing at Bear Brook with the portable gear. Now, first of all, the station monitor plugs right into the regen. It doesn't really matter what type it is. And it gives you, gives you more gain. So, now we can have the... We've got all kinds of gain now. So the first thing it does is it gives you amplification for the regen. Now, spotting your crystal. Here's the crystal we're going to use. Looks like it's 7100. We put that in the spot position. And we turn it on. Okay, so now we know where we are on the dial. That's the first thing that can do for you. The second thing is, now that we know that we have our receiver tuned to our transmitter, we need side tone. And we know that the transmitter overloads the regen. You're not going to get any side tone. So, you can bring the gain back some. So we go into the transmit mode. Tune up. Okay. Now we're in the transmit mode. And we go back to receive. And of course, this is all digital stuff. Nobody's going to answer me. But you get the idea. So the station monitor is acting to allow us to get on frequency. It's allowing us to have a little more gain for the regen. And it's giving us the side tone we want. That's a useful adjunct, I guess you'd call it, for the station. But that's not the way Grandpa solved it. In the next video, we're going to learn what they did back in the 20s to solve this situation without resorting to integrated circuits and transistors. So here is the station monitor schematic. This is basically what I was using on that outing a couple of weeks ago where I was at Bear Brook using the portable equipment. Now the first thing I was trying to do was find out what frequency my crystal was on with the regen. So by taking the crystal out of the transmitter and plugging it in here, I could turn this little oscillator on, which is nothing but a JFET, an MPF-102, that's uh, in a Pierce configuration. This Pierce oscillator basically takes advantage of the natural uh, phase shift you get through the crystal and of course the 102 has a 180 degree phase shift here so it's very easy to get back to 360 get positive feedback and voila you have oscillation by turning the spot oscillator on we can now find our crystal on the regen dial basically it'll be just a a zero beat that you'll do to the crystal frequency Additionally, we want to be able to amplify the regen's output. And the particular regen I had had a 60 volt B plus. So there's DC here. And the way to get rid of the DC that I wanted to use was a real transformer. And I found a 2000 ohm to 2000 ohm transformer. This basically allows me to couple just the audio into this LM380 1 watt amplifier. You could just as well use an LM386, an LM390, or any other of your favorite audio output devices. And as you could hear, this brought you up to the speaker level, even outdoors. You do want to have a fairly low impedance potentiometer, something between 5 and 10K. You want to keep this impedance fairly low on the input of the 380. Uh, you'll notice there's some capacitors here and there and a resistor. This is basically just some shaping to take some of the hiss out of the uh, the regen output. B 
before sending it into the LM380 for speaker volume. So I've uh, taken VK3YE's side tone beeper circuit, made a couple adjustments to it, but basically what you're doing is you're picking up some of your transmitted RF. The RF is being detected by this diode, turned into a positive DC, filtered by this capacitor, and that DC turns on this transistor, which pulls this PNP transistor to ground, thus shorting it out. So you're basically putting, by putting voltage on this point, the A-stable multivibrator is now working, and you get a tone output. This is a square wave coming out of pin 3. We integrate that with this network so that it's a little bit smoother, sounds a little gentler, and then inject some of that into the same audio amplifier. Now the volume control will work both on the regenerative volume as well as the side tone volume. So you may have to play with this value, this value, and this value to get something that you're happy with as far as injection into the audio amplifier when you're using the side tone on transmit. Now if you end up with too much spot you can still overload the regenerative receiver. So adjust this resistor upward until the output goes down enough that you don't overload the regen. Same goes with this. If you increase this resistor it lowers the voltage on the 555 and that's another good way of reducing uh, volume on the 555's output. That's basically the whole circuit. There's nothing special about this but it allowed me to do three things with the uh, portable station. It allowed me to have a side tone that is developed according to the keying RF. You get amplification of the regenerative receiver itself for room volume and you have a handy way to spot your frequency on the regen by plugging the crystal from your transmitter into this spot oscillator. So that's the uh, station monitor that I used out in the field a couple weeks ago and uh, that is not the way Grandpa solved this. We're going to do a little history dive. In the next video we'll see what a station monitor looked like in the 1920s.